Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of CentOS 8.1. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to reference it. The first thing we want to do is either hit the Get CentOS option at the top, or the big button right here in the middle. Following that, we'll be on the Download CentOS page where we can select between two different flavors of CentOS Linux. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So CentOS now offers two different flavors, the original and the stable version right here, which is just simply called CentOS, and now they have CentOS Stream, which is their rolling release. This helps them keep up with the latest in development, so if you want the latest and greatest in RHEL, and you don't care as much about the stability, you can go ahead and go with this option. Today we're going to go ahead and go with the CentOS Linux option, which is the stable version. Let's go ahead and click on that. All right, and now we're on the mirror list page where we can go ahead and select a mirror closest to us in order to download CentOS. You can see that this is the 8.1 version, the x86 or 64-bit architecture, so you'll need a 64-bit computer in order to install this image onto. So go ahead and scroll down and find one closest to you. I'm going to go ahead and just go with this one, and the download will begin here at the bottom. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD. I'll go to the Start menu and just start up Belena. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP, Bootin, or Rufus. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click the Select Image button. And the image I want to select is the one that we just got done downloading. So as you can see, we have CentOS 8.1 available, the 64-bit version. And I'm going to go ahead and select that image and hit Open. Following that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the change button here so I can go ahead and select a drive where I want to flash the ISO onto which will help us get into the installer. As you can see I only have the one device available to me which is a USB. You can either select a USB, CD, or DVD drive and you'll want to make sure you select the proper drive because all of the contents of that USB, CD, or DVD will be erased in order to go ahead and flash the ISO onto it. So I know I don't have anything on this USB, I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'll get this green check mark if I have my device selected. Once you've selected your proper drive, you can go ahead and hit continue. Following that, I'll hit the flash button and give Belena Etcher administrative privileges in order to run. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install CentOS 8.1 on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys, like F2 or F10. Following that, you'll find a tab usually called the boot order and exchange the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. Alright, if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. And if you see this screen, you've officially made it to the install portion. So the option that we want is the very first option, which is install CentOS Linux 8. Let's go ahead and press enter and let uh, the installer begin. All right, here we're welcome to the CentOS Linux 8 installer. We can go ahead and select what language you want to run the install process with. Well, I want to run it with English and uh, the American version, so English United States works fine for me. And then I can go ahead and hit continue. Following that, we're on the installation summary page where we get to select all of our options for the installation. So the first thing we can go through is change the keyboard layout if you want. If you click on keyboard, you can go ahead and add a new keyboard in and scroll through to find the proper keyboard and go ahead and add it in. But since I'm using the American English US keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and keep that. You can also test your configuration by typing in this text field in order to tell whether or not your keyboard is set up properly. After you're done, go ahead and select your keyboard and hit done, and you'll see the displayed keyboard here as well. Language support, you can also change that. If you want additional language support, you can go ahead and make checkboxes throughout the various different languages that you want, and you can go ahead and scroll through various languages. After you're done, you can go ahead and hit the done button up top and go down to the time and date. 
state. So currently the default here is the Americas New York, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep it the default, but you can go ahead and go through and select whatever is closest to your time zone to make sure that you have the proper time. I'm gonna go back into the East Coast here, and you can set whether or not you have a 24 hour period or an AM and PM down here. If you need to adjust the time, you can, as well as turning network time on or off. But you'll need an internet connection before you're able to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and press done. So since we do need that internet connection, we'll go ahead and go to the network and host name and where it says not connected. In here, we see that we have a adapter available to us. Mine's called ENP0S3, and I can see that the adapter is currently disconnected. That's because it's currently off we wanna go ahead and turn it on. If it turns on properly and you have DHCP set up, you'll get an IP address as well as a gateway address and a subnet mask from your router. Otherwise, you can go ahead and set up a manual IP address by hitting the configure button and filling in your IPv4 settings. So you can go ahead and change this method to manual method and simply add in an address, net mask, and gateway. If you have some DNS servers that you wanna use, you can also add them here, but DHCP works fine for me. I already got an address, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out. Once everything's set up, you can go ahead and hit done at the top left. And a few more things that we need to do is select our installation destination. As you can see, there's nothing selected. So we're gonna go ahead and click on here. And you may or may not have a checkbox by the proper disk. If you have more than one disk in your computer, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and select the proper disk where you want to install CentOS 8 onto. What this will do is erase everything on that disk and go ahead and replace CentOS 8 Linux with whatever's currently on the disk. So make sure you have a free storage disk with no data on it, or at least data that you don't need anymore. Also make sure to go ahead and select the proper disk if you have more than one available to you. I only have the one and it's the 32 gig one and I know that's the correct one. So I can simply just make sure that the check mark is here and then I'm good. You can also specify if you want to change the storage to custom or automatic. I'm gonna keep it automatic. You can also select if you want to leave some space open with this checkbox and or encrypt your data, which will just ask you for a second password in order to get into your system. You can look at the full disk summary and the bootloader here if you want, but we're not gonna make any changes here, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. Otherwise, whenever you have your proper storage disk selected, you can go ahead and hit done. And once everything's good, you won't have a caution sign here anymore, nothing in yellow, we're all good. So the final thing I wanna kinda of go through here is this section here, which is software. But before that, we're just gonna talk about KDump, which by default is enabled and just allows you to get system information if a crash happens to the system. That way you can go ahead and sort through it figure out what crashed. I'm gonna leave this on since it's enabled by default. And finally, the security policy. If you have one, you can add one, but I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the software section. Inside of software, I have an installation source and a software selection. First with the installation source, well, that's automatically detected and that's currently the image that we're using. As you can see, it's 8.1 here, the x86 64-bit version. You can verify it if you'd like. Otherwise, you're done here. Finally, with the software selection and the funner part, here's where you get to select all the software that gets installed with the base system. I normally like to go with the server and GUI option. This allows us to have a GUI interface and a desktop environment in order to interact with the system. Otherwise, you can do a minimal installation or just the server install which will give you command line interfaces. There are a few other options, such as Workstation, if you just want a user-friendly desktop PC instead of the server version, or you can even customize the operating system as well as make a virtual host. So with the server and GUI option selected, I can select between many, many different packages here that launch various different servers for me. So you can see that Windows File Server, I, I can install that simply by checking the box over here, as well as a file and storage server, an FTP server, mail server, and many others. There are also some tools down here if you want some development tools for basic development and system tools, which allow you to monitor network traffic and give you other various tools. A basic web server allows you to install a web server locally, or if you open up the server to the outside world, you can host a public web server as well. Well, these are all the different server types I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and select them. You can select whatever you'd like. You don't necessarily need a mail server, an FTP server, a file storage server, or even the Windows file server. But this one I like using because it allows me to share files between Linux and Microsoft Windows systems. 
Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect a few of these. I'm not gonna run every single one of these on my CentOS 8 base install. Instead, I'm just gonna do the system tools, development tools, basic web server, because I want to run a web server on here, and the Windows file server. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and select done. And at this point, I'm ready to begin my installation by selecting the begin installation button at the bottom right. The install will begin and you'll be asked to enter some user settings in. So the first one is the root password for the administrative user. So let's go ahead and put a password in. If the password is too weak, you'll have to hit the done button twice in order to accept it. And let's go ahead and create a user without administrative privileges as well. I'm just gonna create one called Savvy Nick. You can make them an administrator if you want. Otherwise, leave that unchecked and go ahead and put a password in and make sure to confirm that password. If we check out the advanced tab, you can set a home directory as well if you don't want it to be Savvy Nick, the username, as well as give the user various different permissions to different groups. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this because the default's fine for me. After I filled everything in, I'll hit done and done twice to confirm my password and I'll wait for the rest of the packages to install. CentOS is based off of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and is great for use in the IT world because you can deploy it and manage your servers easily without the worry of massive changes between updates because they occur less frequently, keeping the distribution stable for longer. Also, some of their server admin tools are great here in this distribution. Let's go ahead and let the installer finish. All right, and once the installer is complete, you'll be asked to go ahead and reboot the system. And while rebooting, you'll wanna make sure to remove any installation media that you may have so that you don't boot back into the installer of the system. Otherwise, you'll have to reboot once again and remove the installation media in order to get to the newly installed system. So let's go ahead and hit reboot. All right, and while the boot manager starts up, it might automatically load you into the system. Otherwise, if you have this page, you can go ahead and just select the first option which is the CentOS Linux option and press enter. Give it a few moments to go ahead and boot into the system. For the initial setup here, we'll have to accept the license agreement. Go ahead and hit the check mark if you accept the agreement and hit done. Finally, fit the, hit the finish configuration option and you'll want to log in with the user that you created. Mine was Savvy Nick. I'll go ahead and put his password in and log in. And if you see this screen, you've officially installed CentOS 8.1 Congratulations and welcome to your newly installed CentOS 8.1 server. All right, let's go ahead and go through the greeter real quick. I'm just gonna hit next here. If you need to change your layout for your keyboard, you can. I don't, so I'm gonna hit next. As far as privacy goes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my location services and hit next. Following that, you can add in any online accounts that you may have if you want. Otherwise, go ahead and skip. Now it says you're ready to go and we're gonna start using CentOS Linux. We get this dialog box telling us how to get started. So you can go ahead and go through common tasks here. Otherwise you can exit out and let's take a moment to go through what's available here. In the top left hand corner we have activities where you can load some shortcuts as well as all the applications and you have a search bar. On the right hand side you can switch workspaces if you have more than one. By default you have Firefox, the file browser, their software center, help and a terminal available. In the show applications, you can see every other application. There's not much on here since it is the server version and is quite minimal. Exiting out of activities, on the top middle, you have the current date and time. And if you click it, you can see a calendar available to you with all the notifications on the left. And then on the top right hand corner, you have the sound control as well as the wire or wireless connection that you have, the current user who's logged in, and settings as well as logging out and shutting down the computer. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and set up your web server, which is fairly easily done since we went ahead and installed all the packages. You just have to enable the Damien in order to run. Same goes with any of the other servers, such as an FTP server. If you went ahead and installed that one, you'll have to enable the process. If you'd like me to go ahead and show you how to do that, or how to install a web server, FTP server, or anything else on CentOS 8. Go ahead and put a comment in the comment section and I'll see if I can make another video for that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of CentOS 8.1 and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.